Hi, how's it going? Well, I finally got the firmware update for the Yes Welder DP200, and I made some time to do some testing. I still have a lot going on and limited time, but I wanted to at least get some initial impressions of the update. Yes Welder sent me firmware version 5.1. Some folks in the comments told me there were issues with 5.1 and that I should try to find version 5.2, which worked better for them. I emailed Yes Welder and asked them for version 5.2 and they told me that 5.1 is the latest version and there are no issues with it. Apparently I'm not cool enough to get version 5.2. So I installed 5.1. So far I haven't had any issues, but I will let you know if any problems come up as I test more things. The update process was easy enough, but it is mildly annoying that the unit has a USB-C port, but they recommend an eight gigabyte flash drive and say anything over 32 gigabytes won't work at all. Nobody local sells anything smaller than 64 gigabytes. I happened to have an older generic 8 gigabyte drive, and it was USB-A, not C, but I also have a USB-A to C adapter, and with that, it worked. So for me, it really wasn't a big deal, but not everyone will happen to have an 8 gigabyte stick kicking about, or a USB-A to C adapter, so you may have to buy something to make this update happen. With the update installed, there is now a manual mode, which you can access by holding the center button for several seconds. You can see a smart setting in the middle of the display, and when you hold the button, that switches off. And with that off, you can manually adjust the voltage and wire feed speed to whatever you want. But just be aware, you can't use pulse in manual mode. All pulse features are only available in the smart mode, which is always synergic with some form of auto control. In smart mode, I still think it is a bit limited in terms of what gas and wire size options you can pick, but they did add a 98 to gas, they let you pick a wider range of sizes in pulse mode than they did before, and pulse mode is available when running on 120 volts now. And they say there have been some optimizations of the automatic welding parameters. And honestly, it makes sense that they would only provide so many options in the auto setting, because they have to test and tune every one of them. And it has a manual mode now, so those limitations don't feel nearly as, well, <laughs> limiting as they did before. For testing, first thing first, I wanted to see if the auto mode worked more like an auto mode should, without having to tweak and mess with the settings to get it to run smooth. Because that's how an auto mode should work. I started with standard MIG and 7525 gas, because that's probably what most people will do with this machine most of the time. Oh, without doing a cut and etch, hard to tell how well it burned in, but it ran really smooth. I started with 030 inch wire and I tested it on 16 gauge and 3 16 inch steel. And I'm happy to report that all the auto settings ran pretty well. Obviously, you may want to tweak the heat up or down from the defaults depending on the situation, and you can. But none of the default settings ran obviously way too hot or way too cold, and the default setting always ran pretty smooth. It sometimes stuttered a lot on the start, but I can't be sure that wasn't because of a bad ground on the table. My table is really due for a quick polish. I switched to 035 inch wire and the story was the same. I ran it on 1 8 inch and 3 16 inch steel, and it ran pretty smooth with the auto settings. I also tried bumping the settings up to 1 quarter and 3 8 inch steel, and on those settings it ran smooth too. Again, it's possible you might want to tweak the heat depending on the situation and what you're doing, but the Synergic settings ran reasonably smooth for me without tweaks. And just for the heck of it, 3 8 inch Synergic auto setting. It's not on 3 inch steel, don't worry about that. But I just want to see how well the setting runs. Auto setting, set for 3 8 inch steel, does it just run okay? Again, kind of a dirty piece of metal, but hey, whatever. Yeah, ran smooth. The bead looks like it's 
crowned at the bottom, not tied in, but that's just because I was going over another bead that was there, and I didn't overlap. I literally just went across the top of the bead that was there. But yeah, it ran smooth. Ran smooth, seemed like it was burning in nice and hot. Hey, I... I don't know. All the Synergic settings I tried worked well, and the manual setting works just fine, even to the point that I was able to turn it up high enough to get it to spray. So, yeah, not bad. Next, I tried pulse and dual pulse with both 035 inch and 030 inch wire. The machine originally only allowed pulse with 035 inch wire, but the update changed that, so I started with 030 inch wire. Yeah, I wasn't aiming nearly enough at the vertical side, so I got a bit of undercut, and a, you know the bead is definitely laying a lot more down on the bottom plate. But that's just me. But hey, you know, eighth inch steel, seventh eighth inch steel, just. It just ran. Ran okay. With 030 wire, 1 8 inch steel is the highest synergic setting in pulse mode. But I'm going to go ahead and run a short bead on some 3 16 inch steel because I think it's running plenty hot. But, eh, you know, we'll see. We'll run a bead. Less undercut, but maybe still a little bit, just because I need to uh, aim the thing better. But I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera. Honestly, I still think Pulse is a bit hot for 1 8 inch and under steel, even with 030 inch wire. It was tough not to get undercut on 1 8 inch steel. Though I'm sure part of the problem is my relative inexperience with Pulse MIG welding. But either way, on both 1 8 inch and 3 16 inch steel, the default pulse and dual pulse settings ran pretty smooth. I switched to 035 inch wire and once again I found that the default auto settings ran pretty well in both pulse and dual pulse. It still is a bit spattery in dual pulse as it switches from full to background current, but I think that's kind of to be expected and it definitely runs better than it did before without any tweaks. I could just pick a material thickness and the default settings ran pretty well, like a auto mode should. All right, um, this is just a piece of scrap and it's not even a quarter of an inch thick, <laughs> but it does have some other beads on it, but I just, I wanted to see, I upped the setting to quarter inch just to see how it will run on the quarter inch setting. Um, you know, it will run smooth without having to tweak anything. Still dual pulse, one and a half pulses per second. This is just a scrap piece that's really dirty, so that might affect things. But, you know, hopefully we can get just an overall idea of if the default setting for quarter inch dual pulse runs okay without tweaking. I'm even going to bump it up to the 3 8 inch setting. setting. Yeah, see how it runs. 035 wire. 3 8 inch setting for dual pulse. I didn't do much welding in manual mode, but I did switch to it just to see if I could get a non-pulse spray arc. I had to all but max out the voltage, but I did get it to spray relatively smooth, though it was on the ragged edge. Still, the fully manual mode clearly offers some possibilities that weren't available before. Unfortunately, I don't have time for more right now, but I'm excited to see if the tweaks to the aluminum settings are equally improved. So far, with version 5.1, this is easily YesWelder's best performing machine that I've tested. The whole point of an automatic mode is to be able to just tell the machine wire size, type of gas, material thickness and type, and start welding with reasonable performance without having to tweak settings. And right now, at least on steel, auto mode works like that on this machine. With 030 and 035 inch wire, 7525 gas with standard MIG and 9010 gas with pulse and dual pulse, I could set the machine for any of the allowable thickness options based on the wire size I was using, and it ran well enough. So that's a definite improvement. And while there are still some limitations when in the smart auto mode, it has a fully manual mode now too, so win-win. Eh, Keep in mind, I still have a lot of testing to do with this machine, especially aluminum and dual shield flux core, 
Plus I want to try 100% CO2 gas, as that's an option in the settings now too. But considering the performance today, the fact that my previous testing showed that this machine has the output it claims to have, and given the build quality I saw when I took it apart during my initial review, I currently feel that this is the best welder Yes Welder makes. Hopefully that holds true as I test more modes and capabilities. In the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.